Hey folks, how you doing today? Welcome to the video. Hope you guys are doing awesome. So in today's video, we're going to talk about something called price squawk. And it's an interesting technology. It's nothing new, really. I guess a kind of a little mini light bulb went off in my head the last couple of days. And I just thought it would be something relevant to talk about in the video in case you guys didn't know about it. All right, guys. So if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. What you're looking at right now is me on the left and I'm way too big. So give me a second. And the rest, you're looking at a platform called Jigsaw Day Trader. So this is an execution platform that I use to view order flow analytics and to execute trades. So basically within Jigsaw, they have this thing called price squawk that is integrated into the platform. So when you have a reconstructed tape, this is what a reconstructed tape looks like. Um, you can click on this little music note right here and it's going to bring you into something called price squawk it's integrated into jigsaw i wasn't really using this too much prior to today i guess i guess i just made a small realization about something so i'm a musician my whole life i spent my whole life doing music either writing music listening to music learning how to play instruments or learning how to tune pianos i was reading up on price squawk the reason why a person would use a price squawk is essentially to strengthen the connection between you and the information that you're seeing or taking in once i understood that it was like a no-brainer i said why am i not using a price squawk to hear if the trades are hitting the bid or hitting the offer in this video guys i'm not talking about anything in relationship to trading methods or how to trade or why this is more relating to how you process the information that you later use to put on a trade. So basically, here's the price squawk thing. So I'll turn on the price squawk and you'll see what it does. Right now, I just have a general MIDI sound for if a trade hits on the bid or if a trade hits on the offer. Now, one thing to note is that you will probably need headphones because you want to get the bids on the left side and the offer on the right side. So that way it kind of mirrors the picture you're looking at when you're reading the tape. At least that's the way I see it. So right now this is a free version of Price Squawk and on the paid version, obviously there's more bells and whistles, but using the free version, I've been able to configure it in a way that is logical. So I just have a general MIDI sound that plays whenever a trade hits the bid and another sound that plays whenever a trade hits the offer. All right, so let's take a listen to that. It's going to be going in line with what you're seeing on this tape right here, NQ3 and above. You can get a better feel for who's in control because you can literally hear the trades occurring as well as seeing them occur. You see where I'm getting at with this, guys. Price Squawk is in Jigsaw already, so you just create a reconstructed tape and you click on the music note. And then once you're in here, all right, you go to Config. And in this configuration menu, basically you're gonna be able to change the sound of the bid and the offers. And you can also set alerts for a couple of things. Now, a lot of this stuff, you're not gonna be able to use unless you get the paid version. What we're concerned about is getting a clear sound that plays in your left side when a trade hits the bid and another clear sound that plays on your right side when a trade hits the offer. So right now, if I go into the scroll down menu, you're gonna see these are all general MIDI sound sets, um, which should be included in Windows. If you have the paid price squawk version, actually, I think it has custom sound sets. You can have it say buy, sell, offer lifted, bids pulled, that kind of stuff. And maybe that works quite well. In reality, all you need is any form of audio. That way you're strengthening the connection between what you're seeing and how you process it, right? All right, guys, I'll run through with you the basic configuration settings. So just make sure you select the sounds you want for bid and ask. And the pitch interval is actually quite important. So if you want it to only sound one note all the time, set it to unison because a unison essentially means one note only. If you set it to semitone, then what happens is, uh, this might not be relevant to you, but basically each price is a semitone. So the center of the ladder sets itself to the note, the middle C on the piano. And basically for every tick above that, it goes up by a semitone. So middle C, then C sharp, then D, then D sharp. And again, guys, we're into trading, not music here. That's sort of how the price squawk is designed. And again, so if you want it to stay on the same note, just set it to unison. If you set it to semitone, then for every tick, it goes up above the center the pitch will get a bit higher. For every tick, it goes below the center, the pitch will get a bit lower. And that's up to you to set it to whatever interval you want it to. I wouldn't set the interval too high because you're gonna notice the pitch is gonna change a lot. So if you set it to an octave, for example, then the pitch is gonna go from a high pitch to a low pitch really quickly. So 
that's probably not ideal. I thought it sounded pretty good just set to a unison, although maybe you'll get tired of hearing the same note over and over again, but I don't think that's our main concern here. Our concern is making money, right? <laughs> the other thing here that's important is if you do set it to a certain pitch interval, you need to tell it how many ticks before it recenters the ladder. So what I notice is that if you set this to a high amount, what's going to happen is let's say the market moves up very aggressively in a short amount of time. What will happen is the sound will increase to a much higher pitch and it won't reset back to the center line. So make sure you set this to a small enough number that it generally sticks around the same pitch that is and i also uncheck this box right here because that represents the alert for recentering and i don't really care about hearing a sound when it recenters the ladder i don't really think that's relevant for me at least um the last thing here is the speaker control so make sure you have the stereo effect set on and left is bid right is ask again you can configure that how you like just from editing the video i heard that you guys can't actually hear left and right but trust me it works okay all right, guys, so even in the free version of Price Squawk, you can actually get a little bit creative. So check this out. I thought of something and I want to share it with you. So let's say you have one Price Squawk for a reconstructed tape and you've got it set up something like this where you have electric piano one and two for the left and right sound, right? Bit in the offer. But at the same time, you don't quite like how that sounds. You want to add a little bit of a percussive attack to that sound. So what you can do essentially is just open up another reconstructed tape with the same exact settings and just put different sounds so that they're operating at the same time and you essentially have two sounds hitting every time the bid hits and two sounds every time the offer hits. So that's just a creative idea. You can use as many as you want. Now, unfortunately, if you do want it to say buy, sell, buy, sell, I don't know if I can help you there, to be honest. I think that you can only use general MIDI tones here. At least that's what I can see under this drop down menu. So I guess I'm pretty much done talking about price squawk for now. You know, the reason why I think this is really interesting and pretty much game changing, again, not relating to trading methods. This has nothing to do with a trading method. All it has to do with is how you're able to process the information that is coming to you in real time. Essentially, it's as far as the eye can see. But guys, think about it. We're in 2020. We've become so desensitized to seeing things. Everything is fed to your eyeballs through the TV, right? What I mean by that is the majority of us can become desensitized to information that we see with our eyes on a screen a lot of the time. Using an audio source to replicate the same behavior that you're trying to process with your eyeballs is essentially going to strengthen that connection to the information that you're trying to process. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to talk to you about in this video. So I wish you guys well and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.